Hey YouTube, what's going on? This is Tim, the economic forecaster, and today I'm going to go over um, the bond market. Now I touched on this a little bit yesterday, but I think it's important that I go a little bit more into depth as far as the bond market and how it works, so you get an understanding of how it is the real pulse of our economy. Alright, let's keep the math simple. Let's go over some basic uh, interest rates on bonds and uh, return uh, on your investments. Let's say, for instance, that uh, you invested $100,000 in a 10-year bond paying 5% interest per year. The return on your investment would be $5,000 of interest paid per year. Now, if you keep the bond until maturity, you would get the $5,000 per year for a duration of 10 years. Now, let's take a look and see what happens when interest rates change. Let's say interest rates drop from 5% to 1%. Okay, and what has basically happened? Well, in reality, you've made quite a killing on your investment. Because if another investor wanted to make $5,000 per year return investment on their money, that same investment would cost them $500,000 at 1% in order to get a return of $5,000 per year. So, in reality, you could sell your bond on the open market for a half a million dollars. Now, let's see what happens when interest rates go the other way. Okay, let's say rates go from 5% to 10%. Okay, on the same investment now, what has happened is you've lost half of the value of your bond. And the reason why is because if a new investor coming into the market wants a $5,000 annual return on their investment, they would only have to put $50,000 into a bond that would pay the same return. Now, this also applies, of course, to our treasury bond market. And you can see what happens when people hold bonds. Okay, for instance, if they've purchased it, the low interest rate, say for instance, they'd say 2.5%, okay, and they were to have a $100,000 investment, that they would get $2,500 per year return on their investment. If they held the bond to maturity, nothing changes. But what happens when interest rates go up, say for instance, interest rates went from 2.5% to 5%. Now, again, we're looking at a scenario where to get the same return on that investment, it would only take $50,000. So in reality, their treasury bond has lost half of its value. So as rates go up, bonds lose value in the open market. Now, a lot of bond traders will actually watch the market. And as rates start to rise, if they feel that rates are going to continue to rise, they will definitely want to sell their bonds. They will want to get out of the U.S. debt. Now, what that creates is it creates rates to rise even faster because there's more of a supply of bonds on the market and it pushes rates up in order to try and draw investors in to purchase that debt. So the real danger here would be a bond market dislocation which would basically be that rates start to rise at a substantial enough rate where people will start to run for the exits and basically start to flood the markets with U.S. Treasuries. Now, as rates climb, this also becomes more appealing in some respects to banks because banks, right now with the economy, with the way that the environment is, it's a much safer investment for them to purchase Treasuries. Now, if, for instance, they can purchase Treasuries, say, at 3.5%, they're guaranteed to make that 3.5% interest on their money. And they would more than likely uh, rather put that money into bonds than to make risky uh, loans in uh, certain, uh, you know, very turbulent economy. That's what's kind of happened in the past with these banks and why they don't want to lend. I mean, they'll actually hold, for instance, U.S. Treasury bonds. And one reason why the government has started quantitative easing, when the government actually comes in and starts to buy bonds is because when these bonds are purchased, it actually push, pushes the interest rates lower. 
and it makes it less appealing for these banks to actually hold these bonds and they look elsewhere to make uh, riskier investments you know in the economy to get a better return on their money the thing is is that when the Federal Reserve started this quantitative easing it really hasn't been having the impact that I'm sure that the Federal Reserve expected it to have see they're trying to artificially suppress interest rates and keep them low so that it gets banks more willing to loan money and you know again this bubble has been created because of the fact that when the stock market started to crash a lot of people were rushing from equities from stocks into treasuries because it's more capital preservation it's probably the safest paper out there that you can hold because everything else was considered uh, too turbulent uh, there was too many uncertainties in the market and there still are there's a lot that is going on and will be continuing to go on so that's why if you really keep an eye on uh, the interest rates on treasuries it'll give you some indication on uh, what the real pulse of the economy is now you know I will be going more in depth on this subject later in the future and I will be continuing to monitor the data that comes in from the market and also how the auctions go with the Federal Reserve. Now we're supposed to have a, an auction tomorrow of U.S. debt and the Federal Reserve will be a purchaser of that debt. So we'll see how well that goes. Now in the past what has happened is when the Federal Reserve has put a, uh, a bid out to purchase or when they went to purchase treasuries, for every one treasury that they were going to purchase, they've had three sellers. So there are people that are selling in to the Federal Reserve, and unfortunately, if they continue to do this and are not able to suppress rates or bring rates back down, they're going to create some really, really big problems in the near future. And uh, I'll go into that in more depth on my next video. Okay? So thank you for tuning in, and uh, I look forward to your comments. Thank you.